Okay. Uh, so my name is Meg Phillips, and I'm the Invasive Species Education and Outreach Coordinator for DEC's Division of Lands and Forests. And today I'm going to be talking about the results and recommendations from Invasive Species Awareness Week 2016. So to give a bit of background to start, uh, the first Invasive Species Awareness Week, and I'm going to refer to it as ISAW moving forward <laughs> to avoid all the syllables, uh, came as a recommendation from the New York Invasive Species Task Force back in 2005. So we hosted our first statewide official ISAW in 2014 with the goal of promoting knowledge and understanding of invasive species and the harm that they can cause by engaging citizens in a wide range of activities and giving them the resources to take action to help stop the spread of invasives. And we're really trying to hone in on actions that are simple, um, low cost, and not overly cumbersome for folks to engage in. NYIS.info slash blog has been our home base for keeping track of ISAW events on our statewide calendar. And this past year, the campaign was the second week in July, so that was the 10th through 16th for 2016. Our themes for 2016 were uh, Part 575 and 576 regulations-based, uh, those being regulations pertaining to the prohibited and regulated invasive species list, and we were trying to promote uh, native alternatives to those invasive species, and also the relatively new regulation about uh, boat launches in New York State requiring that boaters take reasonable precaution to prevent the spread of aquatic invasives uh, by cleaning, draining, drying, and treating, when possible, um, their watercraft before launching into any public water body of New York State. So we worked um, with the PRISM leaders to develop a couple of surveys to capture metrics from the 2016 campaign. So we developed two surveys initially. Uh, one was geared toward the event organizers and one for the participants. So we had 48 folks respond as organizers and 61 as participants. And then a subset of those participants said that they would be willing to participate in a follow-up survey about six months down the road to try to get a sense of uh, whether they were using that information that they acquired when they attended an event during ISAW. And so one thing that I wanted to bring up here is that you know, we're looking at possible ways to improve the survey response rate. And in discussions with uh, some of the planning team, folks, we've realized that we might need to incentivize uh, participation in the survey, and we're not 100% sure how we want to do that yet, but we're thinking something along the lines of if you participate in the follow-up survey, you could be entered in a drawing to win um, you know, some kind of prize, like a pair of binoculars or a gift card to an outdoor uh, goods store or something along those lines. So for 2017, we're going to try to encourage more participation so that we have a better data set to work with and draw conclusions from. The results of the 2016 campaign were that we had 120 events statewide, and that's actually a record for uh, the several years that we've been doing this annual campaign. So we're very pleased with those numbers. And we were able to engage more than 2,000 participants across the state. So the entities that took part in this, um, in hosting and organizing events, included not only our eight partnerships for regional invasive species management, but also the invasive species uh, council agencies, the advisory committee organizations, and of course all the partner organizations that work with uh, the prisms um, across the state. So there are many hands involved in making this a success. And in the, based on the feedback from the survey, we were able to discern that about 63% of the events were created especially uh, for ISAW, so they weren't part of the regular programming for the organization. And for 45% of the events hosted, 2016 was actually their first year. 
here's a snapshot of the counties across New York State that had at least one ISAW event take place in them. So we were able to capture um, about 60% of New York counties. And one of our goals for the 2017 campaign will be to engage at least five additional counties without losing any of the already highlighted counties. Um, so we'll be working with the prison leaders to try to connect with partner organizations in the counties that you see in white here. So that means that they um, did not participate last year. There were many different types of events hosted for ISAW, uh, the most popular of which were definitely having a display at a public event, uh, engaging in invasive species removal projects, so some on the ground field work, uh, presentations, and guided hikes or paddles. So those types of events rose to the top as most popular. Um, we're seeing you know, just a few restoration projects and citizen science trainings. Uh, one thing that was fairly popular this year, thanks to filmmaker Chris Foido making his Hemlock Woolly Adelja documentary available for public use for free, um, was that we had quite a number of organizations um, hosting film screenings, and then we also got that film shown on four of our major um, PBS broadcasting areas within New York. So with, uh, from that statewide perspective, for those events that were broader in scope, we also worked with the IMAP Invasives team, especially Jennifer Dean and Meg Wilkinson, to have our first annual Water Chestnut Chasers project. So the aim there was to help fill in some gaps in the IMAP database by asking volunteers to go out and record presence or absence of water chestnut. Uh, at water, water bodies across the state. And we tried to make it a friendly competition by splitting the state up into it, the eight prison regions and having those regions compete against each other to record uh, the highest number of observations or surveys. So this was our first year, and we had 28 records come in total. The Capital Mohawk Prism had the greatest number of total records. So in the picture here, you see Laurel Gaylor, their coordinator of being presented with the Water Chestnut Chaser Trophy from Meg Wilkinson. And uh, an individual who reported the greatest number of records was Daniel Langer from Kinderhook Lake Corp. So uh, he was awarded with a kit to host his own water chestnut poll. And hopefully <laughs> he'll be able to do that in the upcoming summer. There were a number of survey uh, removal or restoration projects that went on, and there were a small subset that were reported um, by the organizers with a specific data about how many acres were controlled. So this is um, probably not fully representative of all the efforts that went on across the state, but this is what we have from the survey. So we had more than four acres surveyed, about 20 acres controlled and or restored, in total, there were 255 trash bags of material removed from sites with invasive species. And only about 25% of those projects had their data reported to IMAP. And that's one thing we want to try to improve on in future years is making those IMAP resources available through the prison leaders uh, and make sure that that information is getting out to organizers who are hosting survey or control efforts. Uh, we really like to see a greater percentage of those efforts reported in future years. Here's a list of species that were either surveyed for or controlled. And I'm not going to go through all of them one by one, but uh, not many surprises here. Uh, this shows the, the days of the week where um, different events were held. So we see that Wednesday had the most events. Um, but in general, you know, there, there were events held every day for the ISAW campaign. In terms of participation, um, most events had about 10 to 25 people show up or, or less than 10. And I think that's really indicative of the types of uh, venues, too, that might be selected for some of the events that aren't outdoor um, field efforts to control invasive species on the landscape. 
a couple did top 100. I know uh, one of those was the Hemlock Willie Adelges film screening that was hosted here in Albany at the Madison Theater. We had a panel of experts, including Mark Whitmore, Bob O'Brien, uh, Julie Lundgren, Jason Denham. A couple of those folks came out to answer questions from the audience following the film, and the filmmaker was present as well. Um, another event that drew a large crowd was the Adirondack Park Invasive Plant Program's Forest Pest Summit in North Creek, New York, and that drew some uh, big name speakers as well, so another successful event. <laughs> it's quite clear from, from this graph uh, or chart here that the best uh, duration <laughs> for events is really keeping it to a couple of hours. Uh, they seem to get the best participation um, and then multi-day events uh, included some of the ongoing survey efforts, like the Blockbuster survey that the Lower Hudson Prism conducted. I know there were um, invasive species removal efforts all week long at the Albany Pine Bush, and I'm sure there are other examples across the state of ongoing week-long or multi-day events. So here we have user group affiliation that was self-reported by the participants um, from the ISA events. And it's interesting to note that 53% of participants identified themselves as gardeners or landscapers. And we know based on the organizer survey from folks that were putting together the events, about 25% of, of events actually targeted the gardeners and landscapers as a user group. So it's nice to see that. Um, they were able to draw out that crowd and provide them with the messages that they were trying to get out to the public. Other uh, top groups that were targeted by the event organizers included private landowners and also municipalities. In an effort to uh, gauge whether or not folks were, were learning about invasive species, um, from attending the ISA events, we put together a couple of questions that were targeted at getting an understanding of participant knowledge and skill level. So we asked them the same questions before and after the event, and they self-reported their knowledge level, one being no knowledge or skill, and five being very knowledgeable or skilled. And the numbers that you see here in the before and after columns are weighted averages based on the participant responses. And of course, we're happy to see that there's an increase in self-reported knowledge for each of these five skills after attending an event. Another question that was asked in the um, participant feedback survey was whether or not folks were aware of the Part 575 regulations that prohibit or regulate the possession, transport, importation, importation sale, purchase, and introduction of selected invasive species. And we were happy to see that um, most folks were at least somewhat aware of these regulations, and many folks were aware of and familiar with the regulations. Um, so the enforcement for these types of regs occurs mostly at the nurseries and stock growing facilities because uh, inspectors from Department of Ag and Markets go out and actually conduct inspections and make sure that compliance is happening um, at, at that point in the process. And consumers might be familiar with the regulations through gardening clubs, PRISM outreach, and then also the labels on plants that are just um, regulated. At stores, they need to be labeled as um, invasive species that may be harmful to the environment so that people are aware when they're purchasing them uh, that they could become a problem. We also asked about awareness with the Part 576 regulations, and those are the clean, drain, dry, and treat regulations that apply to boat launch sites across the state. And these came out um, around Labor Day. So we were kind of surprised with how aware folks were of these because they were more recent in nature. But we have about 50% of people saying that they are for aware and familiar. Um, with these regulations. And a part of that might be due to the fact that the state has invested significant resources in funding boat storage programs uh, to have people at boat launches across the state educating boaters and anglers about 
these regulations and the best management practices that they can follow to avoid being part of the problem. So we think that um, this high rate of awareness with these regs may be a result of that on-the-ground outreach that's occurring across the state. So we find that participants learned about I-5 events in um, several different ways, um, definitely through their prison listserv, so we're happy to see that. The social media and organizations' websites were other top hitters. But as you see, 35 people reported that they found out um, about the events they attended in other ways. So let's take a closer look at that. Some of the other ways um, include direct email invitations, uh, conservation organization meetings, word of mouth, uh, coworkers and friends, uh, websites, and their Cornell Cooperative Extension offices. So we thank those folks for helping us to get the word out. On the flip side, it's interesting to look at where the organizers advertised and seeing, you know, if we're being effective with our advertising efforts. Um, so 35 of the organizers that completed the survey said that they posted their event to the statewide calendar, and we ask that everyone does that. We want to have a running tally of events so that we can uh, capture metrics like we are doing here. Um, also on their own websites, social media, through their prison listservs, and then some folks did newsletter and newspaper outreach with press releases, um, and to a lesser degree, blog posts. Some of the uh, Methods that fell into the other category here for the organizers included e-blast, direct email, flyers, lawn signs, and word of mouth. So at 80% of events that took place during ISA, some sort of outreach material was distributed. So what we'd like to get a sense of is what types of materials would be helpful to have for the 2017 campaign. And organizers indicated that they would like to have um, some sort of I saw poster. Um, they needed more part 575 plant and animal booklets, and we actually just did a reorder for that publication, uh, both publications, and have many copies on hand. So if folks need those, reaching out to me is a good way to get them. My email will be on the final slide. The plant-wise brochure, which provides native alternatives to invasive species. And again, you can get copies of that from myself. Um, stickers and pins, uh, which we have the prison leaders order for their respective regions. And outreach material geared toward youth and information about how to control invasive species um, for landowners. So that would be focusing on the more mechanical methods as opposed to pesticide or herbicide applications. Uh, so the, the outreach team here at DEC is going to do our best to meet some of these needs for the 2017 campaign. Social media. Um, DEC had an intern from SUNY ESF over the summer that was of great help to us in prepping posts for the entire week of ISA. So she came up with 11 posts that generated 359 likes 222 shares and 15 comments, and DEC's Twitter I saw content generated 113 retweets and 102 likes. So in total, there were over 800 reactions to just the content that DEC posted. And as you can see here on the slide, other organizations across the state were posting additional content or sharing our content. and. Um, I think that social media is a really powerful tool for, for advertising events and also just disseminating messages um, about invasive species prevention. Uh, this is my favorite slide, uh, some warm fuzzies for you. Um, so when asked if participants would attend a similar event in the future, we got some great testimonial material out of this as some folks responded with, with these answers, like, absolutely, I love learning and making a difference. And yes, this type of activity is something that I'm passionate about and can help prepare me for experiences as both a student and a future member of the workforce. And I also really like the last one, yes, and I like my kids to attend as well. So informing that next generation, it's very important. 
So these recommendations came from both the organizers and the participants. And some of the things that they'd like to uh, see moving forward include trainings and activities that qualify for DEC pesticide applicator education credits. And we're going to look into that to see if that can be possible. I'm not well versed on what the criteria are for getting those education credits. Uh, reaching a larger audience with messages by utilizing radio spots and op-eds, I think that's definitely powerful. And it, as a state, um, with our partners, we need to figure out how we can get those messages out to folks who might not hear them otherwise. Uh, more media coverage in general at events, advertising events further in advance, and I can tell you that um, we're getting a quicker jump on planning for ISAW 2017, and we're doing that already. So I, we definitely will have advertisements out um, in the springtime and early summer. And working with non-traditional partners, and that can help us reach broader audiences. Uh, for example, working with local theaters or businesses, um, any organization whose like primary aim is not invasive species work might help us reach uh, community members that we we wouldn't get on board otherwise. And then we also have future topics that folks would like to see addressed in ISA events. These include restoration, uh, continuing the Water Chestnut Statewide Survey and reporting efforts, lobbying visits, uh, which DEC can't <laughs> facilitate, but some of our NGO partners um, might have that capability, uh, harmful plants like wild parsnip and giant hogweed that pose human health risks uh, were very popular topics. And showcasing success stories, you know, I don't think we talk about this enough. We have made um, some really good progress in New York, and I think showcasing some of those uh, some of those success stories put a positive spin on the invasive species situation here in our state. There were also some folks who were interested in learning more about chemical controls and how to gain public support for those types of projects biocontrol research and applications, and I think our partners at the Research Institute uh, might have a role to play there. Uh, invasive species related films and documentaries, they were a big hit last year, and hopefully we can have more content to work with in the future. And of course, best management practices for landowners. So I've been informed that Lower Hudson Prism is working on uh, doing a couple of landowner workshops that have been going on. Um, and coming up later into the winter while folks are cooped up inside and thinking about <laughs> what they're going to do on their lands when it uh, gets to be spring and summertime. So we'll have to see if there's any publications developed by that prison that might be useful for partners across the state or if we need to uh, develop other products to get those messages out there. So here are just some of the faces of ISA 2016. Couldn't fit too much on the slide. Um, but, yeah, just a couple of events that were going on. I know we had a, um, a DOT personnel training for how to deal with invasive species when they're doing highway construction pro projects, so that's in the upper center. Um, some mapping at the Woodlawn Preserve, uh, top right. Um, uh, training for AIS identification in western New York in the bottom left, and the water chestnut pole in the Finger Lakes in the bottom right, and then the top left uh, was the film screening that I mentioned earlier at the Madison Theater in Albany. So please, please submit photos when you have ISA events. You know, it helps us um, have images to share and populate the website with, so we really appreciate that. Just a couple notes about next year's campaign. So the National Invasive Species Awareness Week in the Capitol, which is primarily a lobbying effort, it will be um, February 26th through March 4th. And New York is having its summer campaign the second week in July, as we have been doing um, for the past couple of years. So that's July 9th through 15th, and that coincides with the national campaign for 2017. So hopefully we get some added exposure through that and are able to uh, pool our resources. And planning is already underway. So if you have ideas about events that you want to host, reach out to your prison leader, 
and uh, you can also talk to me. I'll be the ISAW chair for 2017 as well. If you need resources or um, are looking for speakers, I can probably help you in that way. And I should mention here that um, part of the five-year strategic plan for invasive species education and outreach uh, entails increasing the resources that we're dedicating to the planning, implementation, and evaluation of our annual Awareness Week campaign. So we're going to be improving the web page, uh, trying to promote increased sharing of resources, and coming up with an ISAW event toolkit to make event coordination uh, even easier. And we also hope to expand our statewide efforts by continuing the Water Chestnut Chaser Initiative and working with PBS stations to air invasive species-related content uh, during ISAW. And that's it. So um, there's my contact information. And if you have any questions uh, about the 2016 campaign or um, need help with planning for 2017, please reach out to me. All right, thank you.